Welcome back. As promised, let's turn our attention to the power sector. In a first, power companies will now have to compensate consumers for power cuts. The government has notified rules guaranteeing the rights to consumers. We caught up with Praveen Sinha, the MD and CEO of Tata Power, to understand how this would impact them. Listen in. This is a very progressive step by government of India where they have come with the rules which will ensure quality power supply to the consumers. However, there are two more players in this. The implementation has to be done by the state discoms and the enforcement of this has to be done by the state regulators. And it's important that they also come on board and enforce it so that the quality power which the consumers have been asking for uh, is supplied to them. Power uh, as a uh, progressive and the largest power company in the country was the first to announce that we would become zero carbon by 2050. And uh, this was a, a decision we took uh, in this year so that uh, we very clearly spell out that we are moving away from coal over a period of time. And uh, we also said that uh, we would uh, enhance our renewable portfolio. So from our present 30% of our total generation capacity, which is non-carbon, uh, uh, we would be increasing it to 50% by 2025. All right, let's uh, take this discussion forward, talk about Tata Power as well as the other developments in the sector. Swarnim Maheshwari of Edelweiss Institutional Equities is now here with us. Uh, Swarnim, morning. Um, you just heard, uh, you know, the CEO and MD of Tata Power, Mr. Praveer Sinha, talking about how the company is now uh, gunning for sustainable as well as clean growth. Um, you believe the company is at the cusp of a mega transformation. Um, what is the call that you're making on Tata Motors? Sure. So uh, good morning, everyone, and uh, thanks for having me. Uh, so what we're really trying to convey in our latest report it really is the mega transformation of the power industry towards the renewables, uh, which is not only you know gravitating towards the utility scale renewables uh, projects, but also towards the smaller size products. Uh, for example, if you have uh, rooftop solar and then agriculture solar water pumps. So th there's a change in the external factor over here, uh, like you have this lower interest rate regime technological advancements because of which the economics of the renewable power is getting much more attention and adoption. And then on top of this, uh, we have uh, the government's special focus uh, on this sector. For example, uh, just a couple of days back, we had this net metering policy. Of course, it's in draft, but the implementation should happen over the next few months. Uh, all these things, all these factors, they are really uh, leading to a faster acceleration towards the renewable energy as against, uh, you know, earlier than expected, really. So the transition is real uh, in, in both in India or, or globally. And then there is a very big focus on the ESG ratings, uh, which every company is trying to really improve upon, uh, because this is now integral to their uh, main businesses, uh, credit ratings or, or the investing activities. So uh, overall, uh, if you look at it, I think the call really first is all on the sector itself that the companies are uh, realigning their business model uh, towards the renewable energy and uh, which should actually also help towards improving your ESG ratings. Uh, just coming on Tata Power, uh, so what we believe is that it's, it's on the cusp of a mega transformation. Uh, on the one hand, it's getting rid of, uh, it's getting rid of its uh, legacy issues uh, with respect to your deleveraging and the restructuring. And then you, on the other hand, it's realigning its, its business model to the new ESG focus areas, which are both uh, you know, niche and scalable. So we, we label this new businesses of Tata Powers as, as something called as a sunrise business. And our proprietary work really packs the overall opportunity at uh, USD 60 odd billions over the next uh, uh, couple of years, say next to three to three and a half years. Uh, in fact, these sunrise businesses, uh, they are actually high on ROC, so it should really contribute uh, incrementally towards the R R Tata Power's ROCs also, and uh, it should actually start contributing meaningfully to, towards their PAT also. So yeah, that, that's uh, you know some of the uh, you know just from our report on Tata Power as well. 
Uh, you know, we'll come back to that in greater detail. I just wanted to also touch upon the new electricity rules. You know, uh, what Mr. Sinha was talking about, that how consumers will now have to be compensated for any power failures. There is a right to getting power supply 24 by 7. Just in the near or medium term, uh, will this impact the financials of any power companies? Yeah, uh, so I think first of all, this is still in draft stage and the implementation should take perhaps about three to six months. In fact, you might actually see some sort of resistance from the state distribution companies. But for always do remember that for always some of the big reforms, there are some some reluctance, uh, you know, uh, which, which always takes place. But uh, having said that, I think this is one of the key uh, factors really and key uh, key uh, monitorable for the for the sector. Uh, distribution is the real pain point for the entire power sector value chain. And if we are really able to, you know, plug the gap on the distribution space, uh, this sector actually could well flourish. Uh, on this new rules uh, uh, of getting compensated for any power cut failures. So what is really happening is that uh, the, there are some still state distribution companies which have actually resorted to power cuts because they really are losing a big money on every single unit of power supply. So idea really is to you know, reduce the ACS and ERR gap over there. And I think that could be uh, one of the big reforms. In fact, this reform of uh, this new electricity rules shouldn't be seen in the isolation. It should be actually seen along with the new electricity tariff act of, uh, of 2020, along with the electricity amendment act. So all these reforms that uh, you know, we, just, uh, we just talked about, uh, these are actually going to be some of, uh, you know, really big transformation for the power sector industry. Right. Uh, Swarnim, do uh, you have the same, do you share the same conviction for NTPC as well? Yeah, so, you know, if you, I think the proof is in the pudding. Uh, if, if you really look at what NTPC has done over the last few months, uh, they have actually realigned their business modeling completely towards renewables now. Uh, they have not really announced any incremental thermal capex for the last couple of years now. So whatever is there in the CVIP, uh, uh, that will actually come. But then incrementally, uh, NTPC's long-term plan, of course, is at 30% of its renewable a generation uh, by FI 30. So really, I think they are broadly over it. In fact, if you if you look at the last two uh, the last two bids where NTPC won at two rupees four paisa and one rupees ninety nine paisa, NTPC was the one who had actually bid it so low. So NTPC's lower cost of debt, uh, you know, it it does give them uh, literally edge over uh, over other players. Uh, but at the same time, clearly, I think uh, next few years, uh, there is a big transformation for NTPC as well uh, from the from the business rejigging of the business model side. Swarnam, pleasure speaking with you. Uh, have a great Christmas as well as a new year. We'll chat again in 2021. It's time for the CNBC TV 18 year end market quiz. Just in case you missed our question at 11 a.m. Here it goes again. Which is the worst